With more than 100 years of experience between the four of them, covering Minnesota high school athletics, the Minnesota Sun newspaper's sports editors bring you Sun on Sports. Previously on Sun on Sports. And this week uh, we're starting out with a discussion of the uh, conference shuffling that's uh, proposed for the 2010-2011 school year. Now, here's my prediction for what will happen. What will happen, I believe, is the high school league will have to step in again, and maybe another time, and maybe another time, until they can get this right. Because right now it isn't right. Uh, what uh, <clears throat> I think eventually will happen, the south of the river schools, the Dakota County schools, whatever you want to call them, will go their own way. Uh, Bloomington and Kennedy and Jefferson will not be invited to go along with those schools. They'll have to fend for themselves. I believe they'll wind up in the classic suburban or the Minnesota. And as for the classic lake schools and uh, Eden Prairie, four classic lake schools plus Eden Prairie, I would say uh, the best thing they could do is call Creighton and uh, get them in that conference, have a six-team conference, which would be not ideal, but workable and that's what i'd like to see it's something they can deal with the one the biggest concern that was voiced uh that people have voiced with this is some of the geography you know in the lake conference now if you're living in rose mountain you have to go all the way up to wysetta high school to play a conference game i mean that's a long drive um, hopefully not on a school afternoon right you know yeah. dealing with traffic across the metro area i mean you try to get anywhere in a hurry and it's just not happening um but the thing that I think a lot of people aren't realizing as, as this is discussed and, and as people are trying to solve this is the windows of what, I don't want to say domination, but Wyzetta has been so good in so many sports, even Prairie, so good in so many sports for, for the last few years, you know, even the last decade. But the window isn't that big. A decade ago, Armstrong was the dominant athletic school. A decade from now, it could be a St. Michael or a Rogers or areas up there that are growing and have all these kids in, in elementary and middle school now that are just over overflowing. The classrooms are just, you know, they built a brand new high school up in St. Michael, Albertville, for example. Um, you know, and so, what, in 10 years, it's going to have to be moved out? I mean, it, some of it doesn't make sense. You just have to kind of make a decision, put it in, and then deal with it for the time being, and then it, eventually it evens itself out. I always see changes all the time in demographics, enrollment. I remember when Eden Prairie used to be the doormat of Lake County right. football when they first joined. Yeah. And now look, I mean, they'd have uh, they'd have trouble finding a way to lose a game. Yep. It's um, it, it's hindsight at this point, but you know, hindsight's something I'm good at. Um, I was around when the uh, Classic Lake schools split off from the Lake Conference back in the early '90s. And looking at it now, it seems like that was a really bad mix of schools because you had mm -hmm. several schools that were in booming suburbs and several other schools that were in suburbs that where the population had either plateaued or was declining. So you, you ended up with a situation where a Richfield, a St. Louis Park, a Cooper didn't feel like they could they could hang with athletically with uh, teams from Wyzetta and Hopkins and Minnetonka, and uh, that, that, that more than anything, I think, uh, led to the, the classic lake disintegration. Yeah, and you throw Armstrong in there even more currently, and that was one of the reasons they were out because they just couldn't hang anymore. But again, this isn't going to last. I mean, look like a school like look at a school like Minnetonka, for example. Uh, a, the, the the population can't get any bigger. There's a big lake. And there's a, and right in the middle of the, of, of the school district. You know, they can't start building on top of the lake. Uh, with the opening of Chanhassen High School, that's going to draw some students away from Minnetonka. You know, there's so many variables that go into this. It, it, I don't know. I just, I just think that people are getting too concerned and too riled up over something that, that's just not going to last. Greg, you've covered the lake conference for basically as long as you've been here. Um, their officials would never say so publicly, but I get the feeling that they are big time offended by having this forced on them by the uh, by the high school league. Because I think my feeling about it is their attitude has always been, you know, those classic Lake Conference schools, they used to belong to our conference, but they left. After they left, we still had a viable conference. Why do we need to fix their problem? Is that... Uh, 
Uh, well, is that kind of what you're getting from some of the people that you talk to? Even though we're a long ways from the early 90s, Kennedy, Bloomington felt they were uh, stabbed in the back by when those classic lake schools left. And they want they actually wanted to uh, join YZ and Hopkins and Edina and, and Armstrong and and they were uh, they felt they were blackballed out of that situation. And I've talked to people since then and they said it wasn't necessarily that and but they uh, Bloomington sort of got a <laughs> felt they got a bad deal and uh, so then they were left in the Lake Conference, which they've uh, haven't complained about, but in certain sports, they're just not competitive anymore. But uh, yes, I've seen so many changes. You know, back uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago, we had uh, one time we had uh, what 15 schools in the lake. We had uh, three divisions. Yep. We had the lake red, white, and blue. Then we had the central, north, and south. Uh, they went through a lot of changes. Uh, there's a lot of pride in this lake conference because it is one of the the conferences that has uh, stayed, you know, sort of intact and stuff, but uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, I have a feeling that the Bloomington schools would, if they can get invited to that new conference, they'll jump at the chance. Uh, you know, you mentioned throw Cretan in there. You might as well throw St. Thomas in there and have a super, and Benil, have a super conference. I don't know if the those uh, schools would like playing against three uh, private schools yeah, no, with the recruiting that goes on. Well, wow, there's not even recruiting. Football is the elephant in the room, and why is that a, in prayer, drawing hundreds? Of, they don't have enough jersey numbers to suit all their varsity football players, you know, like one through 99. Maybe Benoit could use a few of those. Yeah, <laughs> well, that well, Perry isn't doing yeah. it just in football. They've won the Challenge Cup now three of the last well, six right. years. They've had and why is that has been the runner-up or the winner right. the other three years? Yeah. So it's those two yeah. schools have dominated. Yeah. yeah. We should point out that we almost had a new conference announced in the spring because yeah. um, uh, I, I spoke earlier in the summer with John Curry, who's the uh, retired District 196 superintendent. He uh, uh, he stepped down at the end of uh, at the end of June. He was basically credited with uh, credited with the idea for the Dakota County Conference. And what he told me was, as of April 1st, they had six schools on board, the four schools in District 196, which would be Apple Valley, Egan, Eastview, Rosemont, plus the two Lake Conference schools. They wanted seven schools uh, in order to announce the formation of a new league. Uh, for whatever reason, they could not get a seventh school at that time, so they put the idea on hold, but that is definitely back on the table. You could see Burnsville being a part of it. You could possibly see the Bloomington schools being a part of it. You possibly Prior Lake, which is said to be actively looking to actively looking to move. <coughs> Farmington could be there too. The, the one concern that I heard along the pro, along the way with that conference though was that they were afraid if they form now before these classic lake schools are placed, they might end up with them. You know, and that was something that you know that they everybody tried to avoid. Dakota all the time. County Conference now, including Hopkins, Minnesota, <laughs> that the so classic a great Dakota idea. County Conference, right? Well, yeah. that's let's, let's let's also mention that uh, Chaska and Chanhassen are in the lake o only for this yeah. year, and then yeah. after this year, they bolt for the Minnesota Conference, which is probably a better fit for both of them. So, anyways, I suppose. To be continued, huh? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> not over by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with a preview of the 2009 high school football season. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Sun on Sports, your insider's guide to Minnesota high school athletics. For the scores and more, tune in daily to mnsun.com slash sports. And tune in every Saturday morning to Sun on Sports on AM 950, the voice of Minnesota. <laughs> 